So, the launch of the Apocalypse DLC for Battlefield 1 has been less than stellar so far, with lots of players suffering from mild to quite severe stuttering when landing kills or hits on enemy players. Now this is something the developers are working on fixing at the moment, and they believe it's to do with the new service assignments that were added alongside the DLC, and there is a fix that's coming soon, it's just that there isn't a date or time for it yet. But there are plenty of other elements that I think could have been improved with this DLC as well, and the feedback was there from the community before all of this launched. There have been quite a few strange decisions that have been made with the Apocalypse DLC, issues that were raised by the community during the CTE testing that don't appear to have been fully addressed, but we do have some information about those things now. During the Battlefield 1 livestream that happened on Tuesday for the launch of the DLC, we did get some explanations that will help us understand how things came to be the way they are, and that way we can all have an informed opinion. I'll be giving my opinion and some constructive feedback after I've got all this information on these topics out of the way first. Firstly, let's talk about operations. The second half of the Turning Tides DLC, the North Sea update, that didn't include an operation, and nor has the entire Apocalypse DLC, and I think that surprised quite a few people in the community. With operations being a fan favourite mode for players, and many changes being made to make sure that operations could flow easily, like adding operations to the server browser, and removing 40 man servers to boost matchmaking for 64 man servers, it seems odd then that DICE haven't added any more operations to the game since the October update. And according to DICE, there are two reasons why operations weren't included in the Apocalypse DLC. Number one, there is no narrative link between any of the maps included. The three ground maps, Caporetto, the Somme and Passchendaele, they're all separate battles. They're fought by different armies and empires across Europe at different times during the war. And two, the development team simply didn't have time to implement an operation for the DLC, with the release date being much further forward than I think anyone really expected. That's the explanation for operations, so now let's move on to afflictions. Now I've not seen many people in the community really at all that are happy about the inclusion of these anti-specializations. Essentially, they hinder your soldier in certain ways to give you a bigger challenge whilst you're playing. However, they also discourage you from playing the objective, they're unlocked fairly easily despite the intention being that they should only be accessible to some of the top players who've made their way through the progression system, and they're tied into assignments that incentivize you to use them. On the official stream, DICE even commented that the community has reacted quite negatively to afflictions and that they don't encourage team play. Apparently, they were supposed to be a tongue-in-cheek inclusion for the last expansion of Battlefield 1, and they were therefore purely more of a challenge for high-level players, and that was to counter the weapon assignments and the service assignments that DICE say they've made easier to unlock with each expansion that's come out. One other mention is that DICE intended Afflictions to work within a squad, whereby other players would know you had an Affliction active, they could equip different weapons and gadgets to help you because you're at a disadvantage. And I've also got some information here on Conquest Assault being on two of the Apocalypse maps. DICE says the reason for this is to represent the battles that took place more accurately. Conquest Assault is all about reclaiming land, and that's exactly what the Austro-Hungarians tried to do at Caporetto and the British at the Somme. DICE also say that once the ticket amounts balance out in the matches, they do tend to move back towards a traditional Conquest setup, with teams moving across the map capturing points as usual. But I think the main complaint from the community is the inherent imbalance of the maps. The Italians on Caporetto, they have full view of the Austro-Hungarians as they advance down the hillside, and the Germans at the Somme, they simply sit behind cover whilst the British run across open wheat fields trying to get to the first flag. Neither of those situations, I think, make for good gameplay. 
So that's all the information we've got clarifying some of these decisions. So now you can make your own opinion with that proper information. But now I'm going to give my opinion. I'm going to try and be as constructive as possible. However, I feel I may be slightly repeating myself when I give these opinions because I think I've already given them when this content was in the CTE and it was available to be tested. First of all, and this encompasses all the information that we have, if simply more time had been allowed for the content to be developed and then tested on the CTE, I think I can say pretty confidently we would have ended up with a way more polished DLC than what we've got. In terms of operations, I fully accept DICE's position that adding one to this DLC wouldn't really have worked thematically, and that's clearly quite important to them. But I still think there are links that can be made in between these maps. This DLC is all about the most infamous battles of World War I. You're going over the top, as the description on the Battlefield website reads. So would an over-the-top operation then be appropriate? You could string all three maps together in date and time order to tell the story of what hell looked like for some of these soldiers. The three ground maps are mainly infantry focused as well, which works for operations. So stringing the maps together with some narrative voiceover work, telling the stories of these soldiers that were sent into battle, knowing full well they may end up dying for their country, I think that would make a really entertaining operation. If more time had been set aside for the development of this DLC, an operation could have been included. And while I do accept that the immersion and narrative doesn't quite fit across the three maps, it just seems like an extremely odd decision not to include your fan favourite game mode in the last expansion of your game. Next, Afflictions. And actually, DICE sum these up quite nicely in their livestream. They simply don't encourage team play. That's the pivotal factor. They provide no benefit to you, your squad, or your team, and frankly, you're ignoring one of the core fundamental features of the Battlefield franchise by including these afflictions. I'd hope that DICE had listened to the community when afflictions were announced and detailed before launch. There was this overwhelmingly negative reaction to them, and yet, here we are with them still in the game. And now they've been set up as challenges and assignments as well. Four unique dog tags were made for you to unlock using the afflictions in certain ways. You're giving players incentives not to play the objective, not to help their team, and not to help their squad. You're encouraging lone wolf gameplay, and I'm sorry, but that's simply not what the Battlefield franchise should be about. I mean, at all. It should be about team play and squad play. Even though they've been included in this DLC personally, I'd like to see them removed from the game in a future patch, and the dog tags that were created, they could be given out to players instead who complete team and squad play focused challenges. I'm really, really surprised that these afflictions made it past the concept stage. They are so anti-Battlefield, it's unreal. I'm really surprised nobody looked at this and went, are afflictions really the direction that we want to be going in? And lastly, let's talk about Conquest Assault. Again, this is something myself and the community voiced loud and clear during the CTE testing. It just doesn't work very well on the Somme or Caporetto, and there's really no need to include it when Standard Conquest works perfectly fine. The map would work far better if it were configured using the Standard Conquest setup, but it seems that DICE was intent on making these maps Conquest Assault maps by the way that Caporetto is designed, and I can use this as an example. Each flag on that map has a Livens projector that faces towards the next flag going down the hill and they're in place to be used by the Austro-Hungarians as they push through the map. So essentially, this map is now unlikely to ever be changed to Standard Conquest, even though it was fed back by virtually all of the community in the CTE that the hillside is just too open, and focusing all of the fighting on the A flag at the start of the round makes no sense and doesn't make for fun gameplay. The same can be said for the Somme. 
Without fast-moving armoured vehicles or planes to move you over the map, the capture of the A flag by the attackers at the start is extremely difficult, and if it is eventually captured, the ticket count disparity is just off the charts and likely the Germans are going to win. Not to mention the British still have to run through an open wheat field with virtually no cover. It just looks like the feedback here fell on deaf ears. Perhaps the feedback didn't fall on deaf ears and simply I'm correct in saying that not enough time was allocated to the development of this DLC and therefore changes like this, removing Conquest Assault and adding Conquest, maybe adding an operation as well and, you know, reworking or removing afflictions, if more time had been available to the development team, maybe these things could have been sorted out. Most players expected this DLC, I think anyway, to be launched in late March, a good two months or so after the second half of the Turning Tides DLC. And the warning signs were there in the CTE when all of this stuff was tested. There were issues the community could clearly see, and yet the DLC has launched with almost no changes being made. We've ended up with a very mediocre last DLC for Battlefield 1, and the disappointing part is, it didn't need to be that way. A little bit more time rather than forcing the DLC out earlier than everyone expected, and I'm confident that this DLC would have been far better than what we have right now. Thanks very much for watching today. I'd love to get your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments section. And of course, be honest, but try to make sure you stay constructive. The DLC might have been a disappointment to me and many others out there, but there may be some of you who like the DLC for what it is and enjoy playing it. And you never know, DICE might be watching, so some of your feedback might be taken on board. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.